welcome to the Honda CRX Challengers about to tackle the Birmingham Super Prix course, weaving about, warming their tyres up as they head for the starting grid. Fastest of all, in that extraordinarily uh, coloured CRX Coupe, Patrick Watts, the 88 champion, winner at Cadwell. He was fastest of all by three tenths of a second, just that, from Paul Taft, second quickest. Then Andy Ackerley, then Stephen Wardby. Fifth quickest, Graham Churchill. Rick Chortle was next. Rob Hall was next fastest in practice. Derek Higgins, Mark Hazel, Simon Sable, Mike Callaghan, Dave Loudon, all in identical CRXs. Peter Morgan, Russell Grady, Dick Draper, Steve Malloy, Chris Boone, Howard Jackson, and Keith Ferrance. And then it's full store. Dennis Bunning, R.W. Addison, Bill Gibson, Mark Donaldson, and last but not least, Ray Byford. 25 cars, all virtually identical, heading round now the Super Prix course, round the closed off, especially for the racing here in Birmingham, the city streets of Birmingham. It's a course that's used by the Formula 3000 cars in the famous Super Prix, Britain's only on the streets motor race. This is one of the supporting races and all the drivers in identical Honda CRX is competing for an £8,000 first prize at the end of the season. And all these cars very carefully control this formula, all virtually the same technically, and all the engines sealed. I'm joined in the commentary box by Derek Bell. Derek, have you ever driven one of these uh, near standard Hondas? No, I can't say that I have, but I think the, the actual mechanical setup with the 16 valve engine, uh, 130 brake horsepower, makes it a very fast little car very popular car as far as race, uh, road use is concerned and here we have it driving on a race track and all the cars are identical so we're going to see just how good the drivers are and that's what it's all about quite a lot of power nonetheless 130 horsepower under those bonnets that's good to get you to 60 in 7.6 seconds they'll be doing that any moment now watching the lights patrick watts on the front row on the right paul taft on the left last year's champion this year's challenger in number two and away they go the lights are green down the main Bristol Road. A little bit quicker than the 30 mile an hour they can normally do in the rush hour here. That's if you're lucky and the roads are clear of traffic. It's Taft who has it. Taft in two. Taft from Watts. That's the one two. Paul Taft approaching 50 years of age, but certainly no slow coach in the Honda. He was quick in a Mini way back and even quicker in a Metro. And he's won several of these races already this year. He gives me cars to carry streaming on. through the barriers. Unfortunately, not hitting any of them so far. Yeah, he doesn't. He gives me a lot of heart to carry on if he's if he's nearing or, uh, around 50, as I've noticed from the notes. He's doing a tremendous job. It's not easy. All those cars are identical, and for any man man to actually hold the lead or take away the lead is is quite quite remarkable. And it's not easy thing to do at all because they are like you're just waiting for the chap in front to make one slight mistake, one slight error, to give yourself that chance to creep by. Fine shot as they stream down the Belgrave Middleway, past the mosque, not stopping though. No time for the CRX challengers. Right into Sherlock Street they go. And then it's down to the markets. And no time to shop for any bargains either. Here they come, round Sherlock Street, close to the barrier there. Somebody's already had a bit of a yes, moment back there. there. Moment at the back there. A couple of spinners. It's going to happen on the first couple of laps. They're, in fact, they're all over the place at the back there because obviously if somebody backs off, the others have got to take evasive action. And I don't think our, our viewers realise just how tricky these cars are to drive at the limit. Um, they're very, to drive any car at the limit is difficult. And so when they, something goes a little bit askew, get a little bit sideways, it's, it's not any easier to control one of these going on the limit than it is a former 3000 car. They've done Pershaw Street there, heading up Bromsgrove Street through the wiggle, through the... Uh, on the corner, appropriate corner there, and onto the straight, the main start-finish straight, which is, of course, the main Bristol Road, streaming through 130 horsepower apiece, 16 valve engines, really working overtime. It's Paul Taft actually is slightly pulling away, but um, uh, the, the, he's holding a very tight line to stop the. Uh, car of Patrick Watts actually get too close to him in the corner there and he said he pulls away at the exit but going in he takes a pretty tight line but there is quite a group of them they're all nose to tail and it's going to take he's going to take think, quite some driving actually do, do to get think, away from them all. Do you think slipstreaming would pay off in this uh, formula? It most certainly does I mean they're doing I suppose they're doing 90 to 100 miles an hour and I'm sure slipstreaming does pay dividends the thing of the advantage is is that it 
Oh, there's Whoa. a bit of nudging going on, and he's going to have a nasty time out there. Tangling there, battling for third place. All go back and start next. again. Most of these front runners have won a race this year already, so they know what it's all about. At the moment, we have Taft disqualified for controversial driving at Snedderton, but many times a winner this season. And Patrick Watts, Ooh. last year's champion. Wide motoring there, and I think into the barrier, yes, at the top and starting off again, losing a lot of time there. And he was right up there in the leading group. You see how it's all splitting up now. They're all getting little groups. We've got three, four groups of cars there, two, two, still, two, three. Still Watts and Taft. Watts pursuing Taft. That's the battle for the lead. I noticed that Jonathan Palmer and also M Roberto Moreno are driven, and I noticed as well, of course, we haven't mentioned this, Derek, Derek Higgins is there in car number one. Simon Susan Sable in number 30, having a real battle with Dave Loudon in 33. Loudon leading, leading Sable. Sable getting alongside him again. Dave Loudon in 33. Close stuff, close racing. All these cars have sealed engines to make sure that they haven't done any uh, naughty midnight work in their workshops. And the suspensions can legally be lowered, and they have done that, and they have stiffer shock absorbers and racing tyres, of course. Apart from that, and the roll cages and the on-off switches, they're standard. Taft, Watts, Wardby, Ackerley, Loudon, Sable. Great battle there, still Loudon and Sable, the fifth and sixth, but good good scraps throughout the field still a good one at the front it's still Taft but his mirrors are well and truly filled by the 88 champion Patrick Watts Taft a motor engineer really knows about the mechanics of the car interestingly there Derek the fastest lap so far put up by Watts in his pursuit well he's getting a bit of a toe you see in the right places giving him an advantage but there's oil mark flags out there, so that's presumably where somebody had a moment just now, or else it's some shingle that's been pushed out on the track. They're very close. Boy, is he close to the guardrail there. A little uh, wing mirror rubbing, I think, there. Just a little. I was just making a comment that uh, in, the, in the guest car, we had uh, Derek Higgins, a young Formula 3 star, who's won some Formula 3 races this year. And of course, I've just looked at the, uh, the uh, sort of the position sheet. He's not in the top 15, so presumably he was one of them that went off on the very early part of the race. A little bit of enthusiastic. Just a little no, too. Why not? Yes. Well, he's got to get the size of the free car. Why not? <laughs> make the most of it. That's right. But it's not easy to make a name for yourself in a formula that these chaps get down to being very um, into the real rhythm. You can't get by them. You can't really show your own skills. It, it becomes a rhythm. You have to really get right in there and get used to driving them. It takes quite a few races. And with the front wheel drive, you've got to be neat. Too much lock on, and you'll scrub off the speed and lose time. Absolutely. I don't think. Paul Taft is having this all his own way at all. Patrick Watts is right there with him. He's using a little bit more road, I notice, than, uh, than, than, Paul, than Paul Taft. But it, it's interesting to see. I'm mean, interested to see what happens in the last couple of laps because he's obviously got him in his sights and he would like, dearly like to win. He needs to. But identically matched, aren't they? Identically matched. You see, you'll notice that he's not actually slipstreaming at all down there, which is interesting. I wonder why that was. The local driver is Taft, of course, racing to win here in front of a, a home crowd. But Patrick Watts, of course, last year's champion, would dearly like that £8,000 first prize at the end of the season. Patrick Watts won at Cadwell. Stephen Wardby is third. He's had three wins this year. Andy Ackerley is fourth. And Dave Loudon still leads that scrap for fifth place with sixth, Simon Sable right behind him. Oh, boy, he actually hit the guardrail that time. Uh, Patrick actually hit I the guardrail. I thought these cars are supposed to be unmodified. <laughs> They're modified very much so now. I think what, one must, what, what we also overlook is the fact that these cars are on tyres that possibly aren't totally suited to racing and therefore they get a little bit hot and uh, the car slides a little bit more than you'd like it to they overheat and if you put too much pressure on the guy in front you overheat your own tyres and that's probably what's happening just there now to Patrick Watts he's trying very hard to stay up and is in fact overheating his tyres just a little bit Wardby still in touch there in third place in the uh, red and white uh, CRX the Yorkshireman there he is three wins so far this year 
nice, neat driving. Difficult when you're having a lonely race. Nobody to have a go at, but uh, he's still there. It's still Taft from Watts. And there, this car, driven by Stephen Wardbay in fourth place. Going in and out of the roundabout, the Pershaw Road roundabout. Well known to all Birmingham commuters as quite a bottleneck on the way into work. Even worse when you're trying to get home in a hurry. Up the Belgrave Middleway, cleared of traffic. Stephen Wardley really opening up the CRX now. Interestingly at Thruxton, Derek, on the fastest part of the circuit, there a circuit you know well, uh, these little cars reached 135 miles an hour fully stretched. Did they really? Aerodynamically, they look very neat. I mean, I'm sure they're very quick and uh, when they can get up a nice bit of straightaway. Stephen Warby here must be wondering quite what he's not doing wrong to not be up with the leading pair, having won, I think, there's three races or something so far this year. Taft has responded to the pressure of uh, Watts with a new fastest lap, so they're swapping fastest lap times. That's quick. Averaging 78 miles an hour around uh, this barrier line circuit with absolutely no room for error and they know that just one slip and it's a new body shell for sure <laughs> what i don't quite understand actually is really why patrick watts doesn't slipstream a little bit more as we had mentioned paul taft because uh, it must have been an advantage here he's dropping back bit by bit i'd have thought every advantage he had to stay with him in other words slipstreaming him would help but he seems to like pulling out to one side they had a major altercation at the recent snedderton meeting these two and uh, as a result, uh, they both visited the scenery and Taft was disqualified from the results. So there's certainly no love lost between those two. Fierce rivals and fighting it out around this Super Freak uh, sort of circuit here. As you can see, there's not a lot of room for error. The barriers are mighty Ooh. close. They're all bouncing off the guardrail and the barriers back up in this group. There's a group of about 12 cars here having a whale of a time. Looks like an American stock car race. Just a couple of seconds covering them all. One, one Honda part number would cover them all, in fact. Streaming round. And, of course, all fighting for points, because this is a championship. And to do well in the championship, you've got to collect points throughout the season. This just is one race counting towards a very prestigious one-make championship fiercely fought we have championships of course for Renault fives fiestas and metros but this is perhaps the most prestigious one of them all full tap still from Patrick Watts best tap there's Watts going around the right hander and onto the bumpy narrow streets the back streets of Birmingham are resounding to the sound of these racing Hondas they're just inching away though aren't they they're just creeping away from everybody behind i mean it looks like this these four in one race and this group oh somebody else has done a real quick 360 without any bother at all so very easy to do and not a lot of room for error lucky to have uh, had the moment there these barriers are very unforgiving they in fact having seen an instant earlier i realized just how strong the gut these barriers are, they've been beautifully put in, and I think they all credit to the people We're of now. Birmingham for doing it properly. <laughs> this is driving number three, Andy Ackerley, a former Formula Ford champion of champions, a single-seater exponent, finding out what saloon car racing is about. Racing these tin tops, he's in fourth place in number three. It's still tap from Watts, from Wardby, and Ackerley in this car. Now's the battle for the lead. Still Taft. Taft number two. But the gap's One of up the amazing drivers in a Mini years ago. Really knew how to handle a Mini. And he's certainly handling the Honda CRX to good effect. He has 78.50 miles an hour. And a new fastest lap to Paul Taft. Driving number two. Of course, you know, somebody that drives front-wheel drive cars always drives front-wheel drive cars well. It's a particular art to be able to drive front. I personally don't like driving front-wheel drive cars on the racetrack. I like to be able to move the back around rather than the front telling me where it's going to put the back of the car next. I like to know exactly where I'm going, and I'm not a 
a great lover, I must admit, of front-wheel drive cars, but it is certainly a, a, an acquired art, and these guys have obviously got it down to a T. You've, uh, of course, handled the Astra, which has front-wheel drive, a lot of power, and a 16-valve engine now, hasn't <laughs> it? Uh, uh, can't be that dissimilar to these. I'm sure it's very similar indeed to drive. I mean, there's a lot of good cars in this range now, the 16-valve type engine, 130, 140 horsepower, and I think it's super because it's giving everybody in the, in the street a chance to drive a very competitive, uh, comfortable, fast car. And, of course, these are very much the same as you can buy, so I guess the interested punter watching will uh, see what uh, one in the showroom can do. I'm sure what our, our people, viewers watching would love to see a, vari a, a variation of Hondas and other manufacturers out there, all the same type of cars, just to see who has got the best car. But we're watching all one make now, and I'm all for it, because you get to see who the best drivers are. Rob Hall, driving 26 there, winner at Donington, and last year's runner-up in this championship, behind Patrick Watts, driving uh, number 26. He was uh, fifth quickest in practice, in his uh, brightly painted Number 26, there he is, Rob Hall. You notice that, of course, we are running on lead-free fuel in these cars. I don't know if we've made that point just yet. Do you think that would make a, a, a lot of difference? Or, I mean, would they be less powerful as a result? I understand that it makes a little difference, but nobody's ever really explained how much. But I gather it, you do have a little bit less all around, although they now tell me that some of the uh, fuel companies are bringing out a super, super unleaded, which, of course, it's got high octane and uh, it's making it much more much more uh, efficient. Power. So I guess they're proving a point here that a high performance car can uh, be driven swiftly around the circuit on uh, lead free petrol. You might argue that I didn't drive very quickly on the RSC rally but I did actually complete the RSC rally on unleaded fuel. And there's Wardby still in third place, Stephen Wardby, the red and white car, still pursuing that battle at the front. There's Ackerley, Andy Ackerley, around the corner. Next should be the uh, yellow CRX, there he is, of Rob Hall in fifth place. I bet Andy Ackerley there wished he hadn't let uh, Stephen Wardby get away quite so far, because he knows there's only three laps to go and he's got too big a gap to make up in that time. And the rest of the pack pursuing. Beginning to get a bit uh, strung out now. A long way back, but still having fun and enjoying themselves around this fabulous Super Prix circuit. This set of city streets converted into a racing circuit once a year. The only place it happens in the UK. Of course, it happens all over the world and uh, as Eric Bell knows and drives often on street circuits don't you in the States it's oh yes we, we have the Miami Grand Prix. Grand Prix which probably is the best street circuit and, um, it's beautifully laid out beautiful surface and really was built around the streets with a view to getting racing cars on it um, it's still used some of the main roads of obviously of the seafront in Miami but they're all over the place uh, we're racing um, at Del Mar in California in just a few weeks time and San Antonio next week Texas so a lot of people are doing it, but it's, it's very interesting to drive on street circuits. There's no room for error at all. Well, it's the great debate as to whether a Grand Prix should be held on a circuit like this or around a proper racing circuit such as uh, Silverstone, a full-time facility, which, of course, is what happens in the UK. In many countries around the world, the Grand Prix is held on a circuit just like this. Who knows what will happen in the future? Birmingham's ambitious. Will we one day see Formula One cars racing here around this city centre circuit in the West Midlands? Well, yeah, personally, I don't think we should do. I think I I'd like to see a Formula One's race here, but I think the Grand Prix should stay at where the grassroots of racing is, and that's at the likes of Silverstone and Brands Hatch, because that's where the young drivers of the future can come up through. They get to know these circuits, our classic circuits. Patrick Watts driving his CRX there in classic style. And getting a little bit closer, I would say, now to Paul Taft. He knows there's not a lot of time. But Taft, of course, really making quite sure in the Edenbridge Honda that he is going to win, if at all possible, in front of his home crowd here in Birmingham. Comes from Orb Church nearby. Motor engineer, a racing driver for so many seasons. They are, in fact, on the last lap now, I think. Watts. 
the time is running out for Patrick Watts to do it. It's, it's rather strange, we sit here watching it, just and it, it looks quite calm. It looks so calm from here, but inside it's very frantic, I can assure oh, you. It's oh, it's all gone yeah, wrong for all... Taft, surely. He locked up those tyres there, and we saw a great big rubber cloud there for a moment. I think it frightened uh, Patrick Watts more than it. It, it seems to have done. He lifted off there. He wasn't <laughs> sure what was going to be at the other side of that cloud. And maybe that was Taft's, Taft's strategy. Still 1.3 seconds in it. It's close. They're going round down into the market section for the last time. Down the... Oh, close to the barrier there. Very close to the barrier indeed. Still Watts. got his wing mirrors. I think he's fractionally closer, to be honest with you. But Heading down Sherlock Street. Then it's a left into Pershaw Street. They're doing that now. And then it's another tighter left, this one, into Bromsgrove Street. Close to those barriers. It's still tapped. From Watts. Up Bromsgrove Street. Into the wiggle woggle of the Honda Turn and onto the main Bristol Street. There's Taft. There's Watts. The flag awaits. The CRX winner here around the Super Prix circuit is Paul Taft from Patrick Watts. That's the one-two here in Birmingham in the CRX Challenge race. First, Paul Taft. Second, Patrick Watts. And third, Stephen Wardby. Well, that was very nice and clean up front, but it looked a bit dirty further back, didn't it? They've had all sorts of problems further back, <laughs> but I'm sure all of them will look back on this race and say, I raced round Birmingham in 1989. Absolutely, and I'm sure they enjoyed it very, very much.